Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. Like I mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about cancer and, you know, what we do, what we eat, how we eat and how our lifestyle influences cancer. And to have this conversation with us is nutritionist Lucy Shege. Welcome to the show. Karibu sana tena. <laughs> Let's talk about cancer and, you know, how our lifestyle, the foods we eat, how we eat influence, uh, influence cancer. Exactly. And what we eat maybe overconsumption of certain foods predisposes someone to developing cancer. But there is not that specific food that I can say when you consume this, mm -hmm. you can develop cancer. It's overconsumption of certain foods. What, what, uh, what certain foods are this that we overconsume? <laughs> because cancer, they say sometimes it's a lifestyle disease. Yeah. Uh, so what, what are those things? Overconsumption of foods like the processed meats, mm -hmm. the refined carbohydrates, and all those foods that are high in sugars, when you consume them in long term, you're predisposing yourself from getting cancer. Okay. Yeah. So when you talk about the processed foods, you're talking about unga ugali. I mean, what are you saying? Like, break it down for ule mtu mwenye anawatch from uko nana need kuelewa kabisa unamanisha nini. Especially the processed meat. These are the hot dogs, your sausages. ham, your bacon, ah. your sausages, mm -hmm. all these. When they are going the preservation method, some of the chemicals that are there, they put you at risk of developing cancer. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not saying that when you consume maybe a one sausage, a ham, that you, you will get cancer. It is overconsumption of this food. So how would you recommend that we eat these things? Because you've clearly said that Usei mm mituache, -hmm. na itakuwa pengine ngumu for everybody to just be like, you know what, we are, we're not doing this. Lucy, we don't do it. <laughs> so um, what will be the required or the appropriate portions for this? If you can't completely avoid them, at yes. least limit their consumption. Mm -hmm. For the carbohydrates, I would recommend the complex of carbohydrates, the mm -hmm. foods that are high in fiber. Because once you take the refined carbohydrates, there is high insulin production. And high insulin production in the body is, is somehow associated with cancer. Because the insulin stimulates the cell division. Okay. It supports the, the growth, the cancer growth, and also its spread. And also insulin is linked to inflammation, which in long term can, can cause cancer. Okay. So for the, for the carbohydrates, mm -hmm. try to go for the complex carbohydrates. Those that, that release sugars in our bloodstreams less compared to the refined carbohydrates. Then for the meat, try to limit their consumption. You can't do like the the red meat or any other meat the whole week. Try to limit their consumption. Okay. Yeah. That is important for people to note. There's been a relation of, uh, you know, foods being overcooked mm -hmm. and uh, how that dangerous uh, could be or yeah. I don't know if it's a myth or if it's the truth. Maybe you can just demystify that for us. It's not a myth. Actually, when you expose certain foods under high temperature, they they produce harmful compounds. One of it is like the, the heterocyclic amines. Huh? The, the heterocyclic amines. What are those things? <laughs> Am I the only one who's not getting it? <laughs> You're too a chana <laughs> <laughs> Hetero, hetero? Heterocyclic amines. What are those things? Is there a, you know, like a Kiswahili Kikuyu word for it? <laughs> then I can call them free radicals in the body, which okay. when they build up in your body, like they, they make your cells to misbehave. Okay. In this okay. process, you yes. can, you can, you can get inflammation, which can lead to, to, to cancer. So try to limit when cooking your food. Choose for gentle mm -hmm. methods, maybe like steaming, yes. boiling your food. What foods are these that could be risky if we overcook them? Foods high in fat. Okay. Like, mostly you find that when you're choosing for your red meat, sana sana atutaki could go for the lean meat. Mm, you so want the fatty one. And too. it's sweet. It I agree. Very sweet. <laughs> it's very sweet. But when you expose it to high temperatures, the likelihood of this food producing the harmful compounds are very high. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, fatty foods. The what fat about vegetables? Mm -hmm. We boil them or maybe blush them a bit before to zikange. Tunafanya makosa. The vegetables, anywhere with that you cook them, mm -hmm. you're not predisposing yourself from to cancer, but you are you are leaching out the nutrients. Okay. That are 
meant to benefit your body. Like you leach, like things like vitamin C, mm -hmm. very fragile. When you wash your veg the vegetables after cutting them, when you overcook it, you'll kill all the nutrients like the vitamin C in vegetables. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've, when we go to these high-end restaurants, unambiwa, unujapa leka maki za wakulizizi maswali. Nyama tu nilo unapewa. So when you go to these high-end restaurants, you're like, how would you like your, your steak? Would you like it medium rare, rare, well done? So well done is, is it uh, overcooked where in your perspective? I'm at medium rare where you can see a bit of the, the blood, blood in it. Well, the juice is all in there. Is that, yeah. is that, is that okay? The meat mm -hmm. must be well cooked. Okay, thank but you. Well, but well cooking does not mean that you smoke it, it could add the black. Okay. So once, it will come the grilling. Yes. That grilling process, mm -hmm. you know, the smoking, you know, like you are over smoked, that's where the harmful compounds come in. So if you can't, you must do the nyamachoma, do it moderately, but mm -hmm. if you can go for the boiled, yeah. the better. Great. Yeah. And when you talk about, you know, the, the oils and fats that we use in our cooking, mm -hmm. uh, and some of them uh, react to over overheating as well would that be something to be of concern in relation to cancer yeah it is mm -hmm. i'll go for the olive oil mm -hmm. olive oil and canola they remain to be the best but very maybe a few percentage can afford it we go for the normal vegetable oil that are ready in the market but the olive remains to be the best oil for cooking but using the normal vegetable oil, just do it in moderation because yeah. overheating it, cooking it in excess, it can predispose. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what portions should we use? Say, for example, I'm just doing a serving yam to moja. Uh, maybe I'm doing vegetables mm -hmm. or I'm doing uh, my beef right there. Uh, how much oil is enough? Are we able to measure that with like a spoon or a meals or something like that to just know that? Ukivuka hapa, then you're having excess that your body doesn't really need yeah it depends with the amount of food that you are cooking mm -hmm. but maybe 10 ml the size of ikijikoya kukula yes. i think that would be enough ah that should be enough yeah. let's talk about weight gain mm -hmm. and the cancer um what is the relationship between those two yeah weight gain sometimes is an issue malnutrition muscle loss is very common in cancer patients mm -hmm. reason there is difficulties in in eating you find most of the cancer patients are vomiting the oh. nausea the diarrhea constipation yes. all these they make it impossible for the cancer patient to to have all the nutrients and energy requirement that this patient requires so it's a process but with the right nutrition taking the enough proteins this is the complete proteins and taking your low carb diet it can help to improve the quality of life and also support your journey to cancer. ah okay because it, you're also going through a lot of uh, medication at yeah, that point yeah. and it can be very toxic in your body so True. even before it finds a balance unapata you're losing a lot of the good stuff in your body yeah. so you need to also make sure that whatever you take in at that point mm -hmm. is nutritious and itafanya ile kazi inahitajika kufanyika kwa mwili yako at that time and what about exercise you know making sure that our lifestyle we are moving and stuff like that during if before you know just to prevent yourself from getting cancer and even if you're going through like you know the cancer treatments yeah exercise is very important like exercise ni kama ina organize everything in, in your ina, body ina yeah kwa mwili. Uh -huh. Kwa exercise remains to be very important do it usiogoje upate cancer ndo anza ku exercise do make it your your daily routine yes because once maybe umepata cancer, it can be very difficult for you to do some of these exercises because your body is weak. It's weak. Yes. So you don't wait for the cancer to check in so mm -hmm. that you can start doing your exercises. Start it and make it your daily routine. Ah, okay. Yeah. Lucy, there's also a conversation around, you know, foods and fruits sometimes that, mm -hmm. you know, help in or contain cancer fighting properties. Which ones would those be if, you know, you could share that with us? Yeah, foods studies have not yet shown that there is that super, super, super food, food <laughs> you know. But it's a holistic dietary approach that helps to fight some of the some of the some of the cancer. And these foods are those that are high in antioxidants, mm -hmm. the phytochemicals, 
and the flavonoids. Some, so gani. Something like the garlic. Oh, okay. The Thank you. See, garlic. now that we understand so like, garlic. Mtu, supposed to have your Kitungu garlic. Saumo. Kitungu saumo, mm -hmm. the ginger, all mm -hmm. these. Things like garlic, it has something called allicin. Okay. And it is an antioxidant in it that will help the body. Things like the ginger. The ginger, it has ginger roll. Mm. That it has anti-inflammatory effects in it. Okay. Taking your fruits. Yes. Taking your vegetables, making that, making sure that you're eating your vegetables very well. You find that you're getting all the nutrients, the antioxidant in them. Something like the vitamin C, mm. a very strong antioxidant in our body. Yeah. But one thing you need to know about the vitamin C. Yes. Our body, we don't produce the the vitamin C. Okay. And we do not store it. Oh. So you need it on a daily basis. What? Maybe kuna kusema ulikula machungwa jana. Hey. I ate my, le my lemon no. yesterday. Our it's bodies do not store that. They do not store and it. And they do not produce it. Yeah. So, so it's one of those things you need to take every day. Every day. So make sure you have your ginger. You have your ginger roll. Something like turmeric. Yes. Very helpful. The presence of curcumin in it helps to fight, to fight infection. And also a, a very strong antioxidant. Having your... The fish, you can... Have, you can afford it. The healthy fats in it helps to fight the inflammation. All these foods a healthy together. eating lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. You've really helped us today. Thank you for schooling us, Lucy. <laughs> Always you. a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, social media handles where your offices are, are located because I know you deal with people directly as well yeah. um, in their nutrition journey. On Instagram at Lucy Chege M, Twitter Lucy Chege M, Facebook page Lucy Chege. Yes. Thank you and so also much. on YouTube, uh -huh. Nutrition Therapy by Lucy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, so.